Well, welcome everybody. We are Discovered Magic Podcast, which consists of me, Steve, and Jeff. You and Steve, are, like you're Steve. I said uh, me, I'm over Steve, here. And Jeff. You, yeah, you me, forgot. Steve. You forgot Jason. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we are joined today by Udi from Leaving Today Podcast. Now I'll throw up your little graphic. Nice. Thank you. What's up, and guys? by Kenny from Alpha Traveler One. Kenny, <laughs> all right. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. So I thought uh, a kind of a good topic that's apparently going around right now is aliens. Just kidding. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> it's like you know um, the flu's going around. You're like, oh, I got the yeah. aliens. I want like, to believe. Uh, I yeah. want to believe. Um, no, so I, I read this article on uh, the new Alien movie and TV show coming out, and these are now Disney properties. And I aliens are Disney properties, like all aliens, like all all aliens, Mars yes. or like some other. Disney. <laughs> what if they're interdimensional and not you, you know what? terrestrial? Like, does it? Does talking, Disney still wait, own are we them? Talking grays? Or are we talking? Uh, what are we talking? Yeah, like the the we're, the we're talking. Disney's like, Xenomorphs no, no, no. and uh, and Predators and <laughs> Avatars. Xenomorph. I like it. Xenomorph. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> um, yeah. So it, Disney has a lot of IP properties, especially now since they have Fox under their belt. And I just thought it'd be kind of a fun topic to talk about some of these IPs and what they can do with it and just see where the conversation leads. Okay. <laughs> I put me finger on what lies in store. I feel what's to happen. All happened before. Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff. I have the power to see into the future. Centuries into the future! Remember, a Jedi can feel the Force flowing through him. Ah, how shall I do it? Oh, I know. <laughs> Smash it with a hammer! The ability to destroy a planet is insignificant next to the power of the Force. <laughs> Perhaps Madame Leota can establish contact. She has a remarkable head for materializing. Hey guys, uh, first time caller here. You guys are doing a good job. Listen to you all the time. Give a shout out to Bubba. I'm over in county and I'll probably see you soon. So, um, obviously, Star Wars, they've already done and destroyed. Hopefully, they can come back. Nobody and... told me that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why that's that's news that to me. Land. Apparently, uh, I, I thought it was just alive and kicking. I had no idea that it was. You know, they they've done a couple of good things like Rogue One and yeah, uh, Andor, but yeah, yeah. Besides that, who knows? Um, <laughs> the jury is out. Actually, it's not out. It's pretty pretty clear. But anyway. I mean, there's still time, right? Everybody. Oh, God, no, I hope so. No, no, no. I mean, there is. But I mean, look at Mando. It started out good, and then Mando started too. out really good for the two first two seasons. And the last one, I'm like, why is there less Luke? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do do we want to go into rumor because there are so many rumors? <laughs> why? Well, it's where the conversation leads. That was my so subtle way of provoking say. everybody. To oh, hope, don't 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 like, poke the bear, man! Don't poke no, the I was bear. Hoping. <laughs> Don't poke the bear because I will go. I will jump up on that little thing and run for a while. <laughs> I was hoping, but nobody, uh, nobody bought in, so it's okay. All right, move on. <laughs> no, okay. So no, I mean, yeah, Mando was so good, and then season three, while it had its ups and downs, I, I, you have to wonder what happened there. Why the trajectory was like this, and all of a sudden you get. I mean, you guys, I gotta ask. Season two ending, how many of you guys were running around? either crying or jumping for joy or whatever. I know me and my brother, 
we literally came out and looked at each other and said, what the? And we were, I mean, giddy. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it flashed back to when we were little kids, and I'm like, holy crap, yeah. this is what we got. Yeah. And then we get to turn, and where we end up in season three, we're kind of like, what? Whoa, what, what and you get Jack Black and Lizzo, and you're like, um, <laughs> I mean, it's not quite Luke Skywalker and all of his, you know, Jedi it's glory. Right. Jack Black, Luke Skywalker, even, even. Like, okay. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm particular. I like Luke, but I know Luke. Luke is a man. He's a goat. So what do you do? I don't know. What do you do? <laughs> I think my problem is um, every time I watch a, a Disney movie, the original. Um, the originals are great. I mm-hmm. can relate to the character. As mm-hmm. it comes along, I lose that relationship. Yeah. Yeah. And I realize that in the last Mando, I'm like, I don't, I can't relate to them anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Alpha, Alpha what, it, what is it about relationships that, like, when you have, there's a character, like, what is it that you relate to? I relate for me, I, I I actually thought about this. I'm like, why am I? Why is this not working for me? Yeah. And mm-hmm. what I realized when I went into the first season that those those shows they draw me in. They're like, yeah, this is who I am. Yeah. You know. And I'm like, I could relate to this person. This mm-hmm. this is like right. everyday, you know, struggle that we have. Nowadays, uh-huh. it's more very higher. It seems. This is how I see it. It's it becomes a little more superficial. I can't really yeah. get that, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, so the, the, that's kind of where I, where I'm at. Like I, I can't. It, it, I lost a connection. Yeah, and I, I almost feel as if like connection is built on this. I'm just. I'm gonna. Why? I'm just gonna. I don't know if this is right or not. I'm just gonna think extrovertedly right here. But I almost think like you know when you said superficial, I almost think like, okay, well, this character over here looks like you or dresses like you or is the same sexual orientation of you or whatever it is. So you're just automatically, it's like you're supposed to just identify with this person. But then I think there's deeper things like character. You know, when somebody has this these character traits that draw you in, it doesn't matter what they look like or who they're sleeping with it really has to do with just their their heart you know their emotions their and i think those things really transcends you know boundaries of of yeah, all yeah. kinds mm-hmm. and i almost feel like we've lost we're losing that in our in our storytelling in our culture because i think those those things where you're like oh i don't whatever that character looks like like but they have this thing within them within them that i can identify with yeah and i'm like man I, that's probably why i just don't watch tv anymore <laughs> you know you know what, what what you're saying is 100 percent true i think the one thing that i've always equated to the success of whether i mean we're talking about star wars specifically so the one thing that i've always said is that successful good star wars doesn't forget where it came from right so we, we, we think OT, right? All the good stuff. And you guys, I mean, we're all going to have probably a little differences on what we, you know, the new stuff that's come out, like whether we like it or not, or, or why we like it or not. But you're right in the fact that as long as they hold the core tenant of that, which is going to be character. Yeah, I, mean, the heart. I, I will go with Car- Cara Dune, okay? Uh, I was now, just going to say so that. Ahsoka, Ahsoka, right? <laughs> Some of my favorite, favorite characters are right there. And, you know, the argument has been like, well, if you're a guy, you don't like a woman. I'm like, no, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the character. Yeah. So the other the other point that I, I, I often look at is like the better and more deeply they're connected with the original trilogy, the more we resonate with that That's because true. they don't remove from the core tenets of that. So it's family, it's loyalty, yeah. growing. Be, you know, it's the hero arc. The hero, classic, hero's hero. journey, right? Joseph exactly. Campbell. And it's that's what classic. George Lucas, yep. Yep. Exactly. It's the it's a classic storytelling method that as something inside of every single one of us, no matter what how we are on the exterior, on the inside, it it, it connects with us and it is that it's learning how to come from one point, go through the, the hardships of everything right. and dealing with everything and then coming out the other end a better person. 
So when they remove those things, <laughs> those lessons and back yeah. into and fold yeah. them, that was the, that was Joseph Campbell and in, 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 uh, was it the the hero of a like like a gazillion faces or whatever his book was, uh, but it, it wasn't a gazillion. It was like whatever it was, whatever the number. <laughs> but it was it was basic. But the hero's journey is one in which you know you you start off in you know this this place of comfort like the shire think of uh, lord of the rings yeah, yeah. right so like the the hobbit hole whatever mm -hmm. but you're you're thrown out i mean it's it's biblical too like you know garden of eden and you're thrown out into exile but then there's this whole homecoming there's a homecoming yeah. where after that you you come back in and all of the lessons all the character development everything that that you've learned along the way you come back into, you know, that space of, of, of the beginning. It's, it's a very secular or circular, you know, yeah. but it's yeah. also linear. It's it's linear and circular. It's it's crazy. But start well, that is Star Wars. Yeah. Right. That that's where like you know, there's this idea of the hero's journey. You're you're thrown out into this space where you just you never thought you would be, and so you've learned and you grow. And you, and when you come back to a space, it doesn't have to be literally that space. Like Luke doesn't go back to Tatooine, but well, he does. But <laughs> okay, oh yeah, oh, wait. <laughs> see that, that that's where. Idiots. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that's that's exactly where the new movies lost me. <clears throat> you know, the second movie where they throw the lightsaber like luke doesn't give a crap about his lightsaber like just drinking his blue milk that, being like, like right there, there is like what what is going on like this doesn't make you any know, sense you know at that moment i think in that moment it's one of those those things where if you're not plugged into what connects everybody to that ip is where you lose that with you know the problem that that, that a lot of it that has been going on johnson yeah it was. well he, he's I, that's I the whole say, he's a name he, that should not be said so i wasn't going to say it but you said it. Um, but, but that guy makes his living off of of being subversive. So well, no, and, and so so this is where you can go and make that argument of like he was a bad choice from the from the from go, because that should have been what that was. But you honestly, I mean? like you should not let your director write your movie. Your, right. your director is supposed to be taking the screenplay or whatever yeah. and, and making their vision out of it, not right. changing the content. Now, Ryan so Johnson's Disney's fault for not saying right. stick to the story. Right. I love so, that. So here's, like, here's one thing that okay. I, I want to post to yeah. all of you. Go WDW Pro actually yeah. said Disney's problem is that they are having writers and directors who didn't grow up with this thing and didn't. Oh, yeah. And they don't right. even like the. Yeah. 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 They just find like, oh, you, you made one movie that was good. Let's let's have you write the whole, you know, tr that, trilogy that, series. That makes no sense don't at even all. Like, like the original like, idea, yeah, or they right. haven't even seen it, or they know nothing about it, and they just, or they don't even like it. I think it's even worse than that, to be honest. Like they, I, they've done like one or two movies, or like you know, uh, uh, what's his name, um, the one who's doing all the. Uh, <clears throat> Thor movies. Um, yeah, yeah. The, 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 Taika the Waititi. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. Taika Waititi. Like, yeah. Star Wars is not Taika a comedy. Like, he's I love that up. man. I love... He, he's good at what he does, but he's not he, Star Wars. Like, that's not going to work. I know. I know. I agree. Well, that, that project is dead from what I, I know. I still love him, though. Thanks. But I don't think, like... I wouldn't sit there and, like, you know... I don't. I don't have a comparison. Sorry. Never mind. No, it's just you just know, like, certain, like, no, I'm not gonna go see that movie. This is not gonna be good. Yeah. 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 Well, I, you I, can't I, just take the latest and greatest and just put them in a movie and go here, write this, and we're good. Tom Hanks and Star Wars. I think the problem is that when Disney says, "Oh, I want X, Y, Z," like you guys said, mm -hmm. they don't they don't get that franchise. You know, no. they don't get the entire IP. So the question really is, should they really, before you get the interview, they should be asking these people, what do you know about Thor? What do you know about Star right. Wars, right? Mm -hmm. I could guarantee you probably 90, 95% of the people who interview for it will probably fail. Yeah. Well, no. I, I, I keep saying, you know, the, my, my favorite thing that came out of all these new movies is Rogue One. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that idea mm-hmm. came from John Knoll, who was industrial magic. Yeah. He knows the story. Like, that was his idea. Yeah. yeah. Go figure, you know? I think well, they could have done, like, you know, think of, um, I think one of the best Star Wars movies was an actually movie. It was, it was um, uh, a video game, Fallen Order. You know, Cal Kestis, right? So, like, yeah. you know, that, that, yeah. that video game was that story. I'm like, gosh, if you would just make that a movie, it would have it would have been phenomenal, and it would have relaunched. You know, because Cal was a great character, I mean, character. Great, yeah. and I think all that and that video game that I only played the first one that made me more emotional just playing that game than any Star Wars movie has made me feel. Oh, really? Yeah. For a long time. And I'm like, all you really have to do is put that sort of, so it's so f- interesting. But I guarantee, like, the people that made that video game probably had a lot of heart for Star Wars. I don't know. But I think. Wait, which one are you talking about again? Fall in Order. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Star Wars Fall in Order with yeah. Cal yeah. Kestis. He was just great yeah. character. And then all the other surrounding characters were great. It did have diversity, it did yeah. have great marketability, too. To where, like, if it if I just walked into a Walmart and I saw a, a little like, you know, some of these little characters, what I would have, I would buy it. it yeah. These wouldn't be shelf warmers on these like pegs in the yeah. toy aisle. Like, I care about. So that video game had heart. It had just. It was you know it was and it really was the hero's journey kind of yeah. retold. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm like, I really think. You know, and it doesn't just have to be that, but you know, just it, it, there's there's an out of touchness with corporate yeah. yep. well, stuff. And, and Alpha, if you have something to say, I, I see you nodding your head. What do you what do you think? I I, I have to totally agree with you. There's yeah. some this connection somewhere there. You know, think about the original Star Wars. You know, trilogy. It connected with everybody on the set. You know, son. You know, young, old. You know, whatever orientation you are, you connected no matter what. Why yeah. all of a sudden these new movies come out that connects with nobody? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, and and I think, and that's that's kind of like the, the beauty and the tragedy of the situation we're in right now because the beauty of it is understanding what we connect at all. It, it didn't matter, you know, the exterior, what how we present or anything didn't matter. We connected at that deeper level with the characters in that. I mean, Han, mm-hmm. Chewie, Luke, yep. Leia, R2, C3PO. I mean, Darth, We and then we go back to Anakin. You yeah. think about all of those characters, and we all find things in them that connect us with it. Like, oh, I know how that feels. The exterior didn't matter. And the problem that, that, that had, be, has become and has arisen is I've heard the expression, it is nice for me to see someone that looks like me up there. <laughs> And I kind of I always found that interesting because I'm like, why does the exterior matter? Right. If, if the exterior yeah. looks like you, but then you are not the same person. You can't connect with them. Right. Then it's a facade. It isn't the real reality of it. Oh, yeah. So, so this is where um, the, the disconnect, like you were saying, is the disconnect is because they're thinking we need to have this facade of, 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 of a character and people like us were like, no, no, no. We want the interior, what the characters. This is where yeah. the beauty of it lies. So that's a tragedy in it. Yeah. Also, is because now, because of that, now we who are starved for yeah. having that deeper connection, we don't get it because all we are are these plastic facades getting thrown up. And it's like, no, it's fake. And we can and and anybody who's honest about what they're connecting with can and will point out that's plastic that's plastic yeah that's plastic and we can go down the line and go fake right. fake fake and other people will come and like well why aren't you because xyz is like no, no no because this isn't real right and so that's the beauty of the star wars at yeah. the core of it and any good 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 freaking ip that we connected with the core of it is we connect no matter what the exterior is the interior what makes us who we are that's yeah. where we are yeah. And that's what the failure is. So that's the tragedy now because the failure is in their their exuberance or whatever to meet um, a quota or whatever their vision is. Right. They're missing the point that that all those exterior factors don't apply. 
that yeah. we will connect with the story no matter yeah. what we look like and no matter who we care about, yeah. no matter what what we pray awesome. to or any any of those things are all non factors because we identify with a person, man, woman, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. No, it, like the original sequels or the, the prequels, you know, um, you know who my favorite character is? Mace, <laughs> Mace Windu. Like that guy. Dude, you know, Mace, I, yeah. he, he heals a purple lightsaber. And you go into that, the, <laughs> the, the richness of what does a purple lightsaber mean? Mm-hmm. Well, I felt like that in my life. I've yeah. been on that dark side. I've been on that light side. I'm and yellow. That is, you know, I think we probably all can relate to that, right? Oh, and, yeah. and that is a character that relates, you know, like looks does not look like this guy at all. But, <laughs> I mean, I don't want to burst any bubbles, but um, but but if it, but it's like, well, why do you? Why would I relate to him in mm-hmm. such a profound a profound way? And I profoundly mm-hmm. relate to him because I think within the heart of his character and why he yields that purple lightsaber. <clears throat> is something that I think I've experienced in my life. And I think a Mm -hmm. lot of us have a lot of us have. Yeah, absolutely. We've all been to that dark side. We've all been to that light side and we've all come back. And when you come back, you know, another one is, uh, you know, uh, Mara Jade, right? So like she has anyone that has that purple lightsaber. I'm like that me, man, woman, doesn't matter whatever it is. That to me, that is something that connects with my heart. Because I think it is, that's a profound place to be where you've gone off that, off that space and you've come back. Mm-hmm. And that hero's journey, sometimes that hero's journey is not just, hey, I go out and I conquer and I come back and I'm, oh, hey, I'm good. I'm off always on the, sometimes that hero's journey is I go off, I, I go to a dark place. But when I come back and I find myself again, you know. And I now I don't I don't have a blue lightsaber or a red. I have something different, and mm-hmm. it's it's richer and better. And I think that that's that's what that's the stories I want. I don't know. Right? Is, no yeah. talks, isn't, know. isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy when you think about it? Like how we connect with something that is can be inert, and it's a color. It's a lightsaber. And it's a color. Yeah. But what? But but when you understand what that means, I think it, 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 that's what I'm saying. So. A yep. lot of the things that have been have been thrown out by 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 corporate, you know, Disney or anybody else, really, that 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 is kind of like, well, you guys don't get what we're doing. I'm like, no, no, no. You, you this is where we're the disconnect really applies. Like, no, 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 we get what you're trying to do. You don't get what we want. What we yeah. want is that deeper connection to what it is. You're giving us this thing right here. We're like, oh, it looks all good. Yeah. But like, no, we're gonna peel that one top layer off, and we're like, "This is where we're going, not here. We want there." And when we connect with a with a color, like you're connected with a color of a lightsaber. Yeah. And some so, people so. exactly. Some people are like, "Well, what's all that about?" But when you explain, like how you explained it, it's like you get that right. Like how deep this, and this is why we all connect to something so at, at such a deep level because this is where we are. This. We're not superficial men or women or blah, blah, blah. We're literally going like, no, no, no. We're asking for you to deliver deeper, more. Give us more. Yeah. To connect with. Not less, more. More, yeah. So yeah, it well, sounds like, like it, it really like is. A, uh, uh, wait, Kenny, go, go ahead. Kenny. No, go, you go right. ahead, Kenny. Go No, just I was going to say, you know, both of you are, are really right. It's character development. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Bottom line. They, like, yeah, why, why is Ahsoka one of my favorite characters? Am I going to identify like she's a female? Blah, blah, blah. No, no, no. It has nothing to do with that. It's me and, and being able to look at her as she came up from Padawan, knowing that walking away from the Jedi Order all the way going, you know, all you look at her arc and I'm like, how is it not like an amazing arc? It's very close to like Luke. And it has nothing to do with her superficial. It's how she handled that. Ahsoka, yeah. Cara Dune, another one. A woman, That's you look at her. Say, yeah. You know, you look at this, and these are some of my favorite characters. It has nothing to do with yeah. what they are or how they identify. It has and Ahsoka, Ahsoka, is, you, you nailed it. Like, Ahsoka and Luke are similar, and they always felt, they both feel like pseudo-Jedis. Yes. Neither one of them yeah. feel like they are actually, they, ne- they neither one of them went through the full process. Of, no, they of fight ever- the Jedi Order. They fight them off. Like, yeah. like oh, we're going to become Jedi, but we're not going to do it. In your rigid 
square way. Right. I mean, Yoda, you have everybody trying like you have to follow into right. that square, and right. they're like, no, we're not going to do that. And, and, but and, I think there's something profound there too, and that, yeah. and, and, and what's profound is like you know Luke and Ahsoka both. It's like, you know, I've been in a lot of places in my life where I feel like I'm having to figure this thing out. Mm -hmm. And I wish I had this set formula. I wish I had people in my life that just gave me, gave me the steps to take, but instead I had to get there myself. Yep. You know, and I think both Luke and Ahsoka is like, does it make, and the big question behind that is, does it make your life journey any work or any, any less, reputable or any right. less meaningful and the answer is no no like yeah. you you can get to the same destination in different ways mm -hmm. it's not you don't always have to follow a set path sometimes yeah. you can become a jedi in your life you know whatever that is for you in ways that it in ways that feel very um phoned not very, feel very phony yeah. But it doesn't make, you know, how, how often do we feel like we're just a bunch of phonies in our lives? I do all the time. I'm like, I don't, I don't know how I'm trying to find success in my life. I'm trying to find, you know, all the, I'm trying to be a good person. I'm trying to find all these things, you know, whatever Jedi means to you. Like I'm trying to find that too, mm -hmm. but how often do I feel like I'm faking it? Yeah. And the, and the truth is like, you know, you're, your status isn't based off of all the time in life, based off of the formulas you follow or who bestows your identity upon you. Sometimes the journey itself is what testifies to your yep. to your life story. Boom. Like that's but that's another thing that we would all I think sit here and go, that's profound. That's beautiful. We all we all could probably connect with that. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, and, and 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 here and here's the thing is like so. You know, any IP that, that's going to be coming forward now, I think this is the, the thing that we have all been wanting. I mean, we can look back now uh, the last, what, four or five, six years and look at the IP that's been coming on Disney. And we can go with one hand how many we, we, we like, OK, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. <laughs> and, 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 and this is where it is. It's like it's what, without them getting what we want. Which I, I think, uh, and again, anybody who's going to be real, you know, I call a lot of people who don't want to look at, at the reality of what's going on, a uh, pixie duster. I, I said on my show, it's like, hey, the pixie duster are going to come through and try to be like, everything's fine. And I'm, we're the guys are going to go like kind of raise our hand like, are you sure? Yeah. And, and, so, and this is where it is. So any IP, so Alien, it, 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 you know, here, here's the one thing. There, there are a few IPs that are coming so Going back to Fox and Alien, how this ties in is this Deadpool, right? Deadpool's coming. And Deadpool 3 is coming. And and I'm kind of like, I'm optimistic for that. Right. Have I been optimistic for anything else coming out that I've heard of? Sadly, not really. And because I look at it and realize in like IP to IP, there hasn't been a huge connection with what we want as people. That deeper connection with an IP, yeah. deeper understanding of character a deeper love of a character, which is what B Disney had done for 90 years. You know, yeah. they had done that. And and so, you know, I'll point the finger where I need to, Bob Iger, but I'll move on from that. But um, but this is where we are. And so if they can with Aliens, or like I said, with, with, with what Deadpool is coming, then that's going to be good because if Ryan Reynolds, but this is crazy, right? I put more faith in Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he's up for the character. He has a lot of control over that yes. franchise. So, and, and, and he's the perfect example. It's like, look, I don't, whatever studio, blah, 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 exec over here, producer over there, whatever, whatever, whatever. The point is, is like, I love the character and I will do what I need to do because I get the character and I know people will get what I'm doing. Yeah. It's been proven. Deadpool 1, Deadpool 2. Some of my absolutely favorite movies of all time are those two. And because of guys like him. So this is where I like, I kind of put him as the avatar. Like, look, if you guys want to get IPs that are good, listen to that. Look at that. Understand what's going on right there. And then this is your path forward. Yeah. So I'm a, I'm, I'm a, Jason, this is about me. Steve does too. I'm big on 
deconstructing and reconstructing. It's like, yeah, let's talk about like how I don't mind being like, how could, you know, what's going wrong? What's, what's happening? Like, why, why are the things happening? Why, why is Star Wars? Why, why am I not connecting with Star Wars anymore? That's an important conversation. But then I think the way to that second part of what we talk about is has to be hopeful and good. And, and it's like, how do we reconstruct? How would, if we had a magic wand, how would we, what are the things? I think we're already doing it. I think this conversation has been good. You know, mm-hmm. what are the things that would connect us and how can, and that I think would diff, that differentiates us from just all these like Disney haters out there, you know, yeah. it, because it's, it really, it's, it's a way of saying, okay, well, we love Disney. I love Disney. Yeah. We, we want Disney to succeed and we don't, yes, we're, we're fans, not just haters, you know? So, so then it's, it's about telling better stories. You know, how, but to, it, how it's not just better stories. And this is where I was just going to go. There you go. It's it's about telling the right story and the, the story, right story when you need to tell it. Yeah. You don't just like, okay, we have this IP, let's just make movies because we yeah. have it. Yeah. It's got to be right. We're, they're, they get caught on like Marvel. Oh, well, you know, Iron Man did good, so let's do this. Another, oh, now we're going to do this, 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 this. Now we have this thing, and now it sucks. Yeah. Like, just <laughs> focus on what you need to do. Yeah, you could, you could spread it out more, you know, like, right. You don't need to have all these things right in there. Every comic book that no one's ever freaking read. Right. Or aren't they this coming out with Fantastic Four now? But Another that, that Fantastic- makes sense, but it's been done yeah. like a couple times now. So. Yeah. yeah. From Fox. But it's, it's about moving into a, po- a more positive, hopeful mindset of being like, okay, you know, what would it look like? And then hoping that catches fire, right? Like, what would Marvel, what would Disney, like, you know, uh, Star Wars, all these, these things, like, what would it look like? What do you, what is you, what would inspire your heart? And then, boom, you move into a, a better mental, like, a mindset. And then pe- it catches fire. And then when people, if people listen to this podcast, <clears throat> at that point, it's like, you know, we, you, you can't, you can't fix just things by, talking shit you know like at some point you have to talk about like what would it look like to you know to to uh for disney to be in a space in which it would recapture our hearts you know i think that is more important so i don't know we've talked we've talked about jason c we like we've talked yeah well i mean it's like i'm saying like don't just like okay somebody write a script because we have this now like let's look to see if somebody's actually has a good idea yeah like we had tron 3 coming out and then that just got the shelves because their other movie you know tomorrowland didn't do good so now we have this completely new tron 3 that may or may not be good i don't know but yeah. it's not the same as what we would have got all right jason and, I've, I've talked too much for the first portion because i've done a podcast in a no, while i mean it's, that's fine i I let you guys talk. I don't, I don't like to cut off people, but I know. But I want I want to give you I want to give you back control because I love you. So. Back control. You're, you're a nice guy. You're a nice guy. I'm not that I haven't had control, but you've been it's generous. Not, you've been generous with this conversation. I know, but I, I've no, said I this before. Do. This isn't my podcast. This is our podcast. So. I know. I know. I know. But it, I and because it's our podcast and not my podcast, I want. So you're not to. cutting me off. You're, you're not. I'm not losing control. No, I just you're, get, you're doing I just, your job. I, I think I'm just uh, sick of people getting into these movies who don't love the movie, don't love the franchise. Yeah. Right. No hard oh, you yeah. know? Well, but that's I, what I mean. They, like, don't have them write a story just because you have the property. Like, there you if go. they don't have anything to do with it. It's an agenda or a money grab. Right. Yeah. You, you need is. to limit it. You need to do what when it's a good time to do it, when somebody has a good story. Uh, and uh, I know it's, it's so corporate, man. That's why you know. That's why they're downsizing everything because everything's bombing. I mean, are we well, are we recording? Yeah, we are. But it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> look at look at Wish. It was the most. It, it it was almost as if like you just typed in an AI like <laughs> crappy scripted Disney movie, and and it was like it was a horror that movie. 
Uh, you know what that makes that you know what makes it even more of a tragedy? That was for the one hundredth. Yeah, that yeah. was. Hey, let's that was make this idea of our movies are like, and and they were all like, "Oh no, don't worry, this will save Disney." It's like, well, you know, and, and this is this is where I go back because I've heard plenty, plenty, plenty of people were like, "Oh, it's a great movie," and I'm like, "Is it though? Is it though?" And and this is where I, I come Not back box to office wise. But. Well, no, 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 and 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 the reality. This is where the reality of what's going on versus what they want to be going on and how they try to make it happen or what they're trying to make say is going on we're like no it's not what's going on yeah you know and 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 so um no and it can't be a money grab it can't be agenda driven anymore it can't it just can't they, they've been doing that and it's failing over and over i mean indy indiana jones have you seen it i haven't and i, I love india and it hurts yeah, me i saw the theater and it broke my heart yeah, other people am like, hey, have you seen that? They're like, I had, I had my other, my, my other podcast with Jess Cole. Hey, I watched Indy. It was so good. And I kind of went like, well, good for you. It's like, what, you haven't seen it? I'm like, no. And then my other no, podcast. Just, my what? wife loved it. And that's just because Indiana Jones was like made out to be a schmuck. And, a, uh, and, 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 and this, is where, this is where I go to. It, yeah. it, 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 it isn't becoming a thing of where we... <laughs> We we are continuing a good arc of a character, yeah. and, and I don't know if you guys have heard heard what they said. It was supposed to be originally before Mangold got a hold of it. Have you guys heard what that was supposed to be? I haven't. You, know, know, I have have no. you, you guys haven't heard? No, no. It's supposed to be short, no. short round and Marion and Indy for the oh, last. I heard about that. That would have yeah. been yeah. awesome. Yeah. Right. Like oh, boom, that I would have been away, like oh my. No, well, that, then that just brings me right back to my other statement: is oh, you don't let no, your director really? change things. Yep. Now I'm mad. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, man. I didn't mean to do that to you. I, yeah. I, I will say this though: I did. That would have been the I did movie, movie I would have loved to see. Mm -hmm. Like short round, and then yeah, and then Marion and like yeah. Indy like doing their thing. Oh my! Right. Give give the hat to give the hat to short round like that would have been like, <laughs> who would, no, seriously like I, I, been, I don't think a single indie fan would have been mad at that they would have been like yeah they would have been like yeah. for it like yeah no I would that that's no. really now I think about that, I would have cried I I would I would have cried he was in Loki I would have lost it I would have lost it oh man no. you know right. so Go one ahead. thing that I've actually thought this through and I had a conversation with my cousins is. My biggest problem with Disney is they don't celebrate success. Thor was successful. He's the man. He, yeah. he protects. And they yeah. made him into a sissy. Right? Yeah. And yeah. if you think, think about this, and you, if you look at Indiana Jones, they made him look like a feeble man. Yeah. Luke. How could you do that? He's, he's the one who bought you the eyeballs. Yeah. And you made him look like crap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I would, and we actually came to a conclusion what Disney screwed up on was they didn't celebrate the success. What they should have done is celebrate the success and bring along this new band and yeah. start celebrating them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. 100%. That would well make said. a great movie. Yeah. But well, instead, they're like, we're going to pound you. We're going to pound you. Forget yeah. about you, you know? Well, yeah, you have to, you have to bring people along, and that's the reason why we don't go to see Disney movies in the theater anymore. Well, no, I'm tired of being well, preached. No, it's going to be like that. Well, right. well, I'm tired of let, being preached at. You exactly. know, like so. so let, let let me use this example that you guys may all be be able to relate to, and 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 it's I and you can see it's endemic across Disney. The problem with going to the park now, like you know, me growing so up, can't. I know you guys don't know. Is I, I grew up going to Disneyland proper, and I call it the only park. I mean, not to say Orlando, but you know, that's just me being snooty. Snooty. That's fine. actually I like Disneyland more than Magic Kingdom. Thank you. I See? do too. Yeah. I actually do too. I do yeah. too. So Don't tell the other podcasts that I'm on. They they're like, Ugh. wait. So hold on. Wait. What what podcast are you on? Hold on. Uh, sharing the magic. Okay, I'm on uh, it right now. I'm I'm sharing right now. Okay. Anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna like no. So I'm all, I'm gonna all, start. They have Twitter, all, right? I'm gonna start tweeting them. Anyway, no, but um, 
<laughs> no, but but that's my point is is what they've done in this endemic and this goes from movies to IP and IPs in general and the park is they're trying to maneuver everybody yeah. into you're going to enjoy this IP how we want you to. Right. Not how you want to, but how yes. we want you to. Yeah. So, you're too stupid to to and, and you know, I'm not going to go there, but that's how I feel. It's like, oh, you're yeah, stupid, no, you don't it get is. it. It's like, no, 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 I get what you're trying to do, but I don't like it. It's not that I don't get it. I don't yeah. like it. Hey, and, and Simpleton, so let me explain this for you instead of, and that's good storytelling is like, let me win you over with good storytelling exactly. narratives no. off with emotions. And they're like, instead, let me just shoehorn yep. all of my yep. bullet points yep. so that I can. It's like. It's like you go, it's like, you know, and to me, I'm like, okay, writer's room, right? The big whiteboard on the side over there. It's like, okay, guys. And you go over there and you look at it and all they're going to have is a checkpoint, checkpoint, checkpoint. Okay, did we cover that checkpoint? Okay, did we cover that yeah. checkpoint? Sure, okay. You yeah. know, and, and I, I don't know if you guys have heard, but a lot of the things that it sounds like they're doing the storybooking. They will do all these different things like, okay, let's patch it together. I'm like, who operates like that? And this goes, again, and so turning it back to the park, is this is what they're doing in the park. You have to get the app. You have to do this. You have to get a reservation. It is literally, I've heard many people, many, many persons say, I don't want to go to the park because it's too confusing. Mm -hmm. So this is it. The, the other part of it, the good storytelling, it's simple. You don't need to, you don't need an explanation. You connect. You don't need it. That was, that was the beauty of the park. You don't need to go through X, Y, Z, like, oh, I need a reservation. Then I'm only open here. Then I can park hop, park hop from one to six or over here. And I need to start in that. Like what? What the hell is all that? It's maneuvering and shoehorning people to enjoy enjoy the experience how we, the corporate Disney entity, wants you to, and it's easier for us because then we can figure this out. You know, you just right. just deal with it, and this is the same thing. And that that kind of mantra and feeling is now definitely hardcore in the IP. You look at the failure of Star Wars. You look at the failure of India. Now the failure of Marvel. Right. And what's going on is exactly all that. They're trying to push everybody into this wee little hole. And the world is way bigger than just that. Uh -huh. That's exactly why they still have the reservation system. Yeah. Man, don't they, they think they can use it to hire the right people and get these people here. And that was never a problem in the past. The, the park has never been overcrowded so many times that we need a reservation system. We don't limit things. We don't limit sales on magic keys. Yeah. You know, it's just, it makes no sense. You know, I can't even go to the parks, you know. You know and, 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 I, and I have the luxury on my podcast of having a former cast member. Yeah. And there are many times, we, and it's been a while since you've been to the park, but it is very interesting to listen to her. And even understanding when she was her time in the park versus now. And, re, and being able to connect the dots of like how that's being run and how, again, this isn't one, it's not one entity of Disney corporate, you know, and, and I've tried really hard to, to delineate between Disneyland and Disney movies, and, but, but Disney corporate, the umbrella, the top, and understanding how, how much they have changed, all for the simplicity of one, uh, you know, for them, and then also what they think, they think you need to do. It is, again, they removed the ability across the board for us to enjoy how we want to our individual enjoyment from character to ip to park to even a book or clothes or anything like that has all been you know just funneled into this pea-sized funnel and opening where this is all you get and plenty of us are now finally going uh no i don't enjoy it anymore you removed all the facets of what made it so special for me. And and again, so IPs, I, I think IP and then being IP again, the IP is you know, meant to drive people to the park. And if you don't have an IP that's going to drive people to the park, then you don't have a park. And if you don't have a park, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have a company because yeah. that's what's holding up. Yeah. The of that. Yes. Yeah, the park is the only division that is – Profitable for Disney parks yeah. and cruise line. That's, That's it. it. Yep. That's it. Yep. It's a sinking ship. It is, and you know, and, and and so so going back, you know, we talked about it before we start recording. People, you know, the the DEI, the the head of DEI, she left, 
you look at the CFO, she left. And mm-hmm. you're, 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 and then understanding, you know, with Nelson Peltz and understanding what's going on there. A lot. That's I know that's a deep dive for a lot of people. I I, don't, I know that a lot of people don't go into that like board meeting. Who cares? The corporation, blah blah blah. But without doing that, they don't. They 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 miss why they're getting what they're getting. You know. Mm-hmm. So well, uh, this, because of the whole Peltz thing, like back in February. You know, he made a list of things that he would do, and now mm-hmm. all of a sudden, Iger's like, "Oh, I'm going to start doing some of those things." Yeah, because <laughs> he's trying to put off the the fact that you know, Peltz is going to take over, uh, and no, you know, he's not going to be there anymore. No, and, and here, and this is where we we fall into. This is where the next, and I and I've been saying it for a while now. The next few years with Disney as a whole, not only park, but every everything, every aspect of Disney Corporation is going to be crazy because of what is going on at the sea level suites up there at that high tier and understand with Bob Biger how he has <clears throat> seated the board of Disney and understanding who's there and recognizing Nelson Nelson Peltz and now he is trying to bring in the former CFO to come in as a board seat all these little things that are happening are big tells that that I wish more people would kind of get into because they would have a further understanding and maybe support more those kind of things. Because if they're unhappy with Disney on any level, whether it be the park or IP and movies, whatever, this is how they can affect change. You know what I mean? This is how you as a consumer, as lovers of the park and, and IP, this is how we affect the change and in, in, in what we're getting and understanding that argument and that fight that's going on in those boardrooms is important. So, yeah. you know, and I, and, and I don't know, again, I don't know how your guys is based on how much you guys know, but, you know, this is where it is, is like understanding that that battle is pivotal and where we are in the park and, and in the history of Disney is like, it's crazy. But, but, you know, I, and I've been saying it for a while, I still feel positive. I feel like the next few things are coming. I, I feel like th- that, that massive cruise liner is beginning to turn because not because they wanted to, because us not only as you know not only as fans and lovers but activists and investors like we're done we're done with this path we're we're turning and we got to and I and I and I honestly feel that the next few years are going to be pivotal but I think we're going to get good things now and I and I hope and I hope and like I'm doing one of these right here that Deadpool three is the beginning of that. Yeah, but so, you, yeah wait, wait, let's go let's go let's go Kenny and Steve if you, you okay with that you sorry, you want man, a second. Sorry. I see that for those that's, people who are just joining, um, we're talking about Nelson Peltz and um, Bob Iger. Yeah. So one of the things that people don't understand from a Nelson Peltz perspective is he has 33 million shares. Okay? Dude, yeah. What he wants is he's like, listen, this is corporate America. This is talking about ownership. Mm-hmm. Your yeah. job as a CEO is to make money for me. Your make job is to make money. Hey, I want to divide this. I want to divide that. If it doesn't make money, don't do it, right? Let me show you something. So 33 million shares. Time. Disney was at $150 at one point. I sold it at I sold my shares at 140 something. Yeah. And think about where it is now, 93. Let's yeah. just say that they lost $50, right? Times $50. Do the math. Do the math. <laughs> one, it, it, it doesn't even go that far. Think yeah, about it. One point six five e nine, whatever the hell that is. Oh wait, here we go. So, <laughs> just that, on just on Nelson Peltz, right? Uh-huh. What he lost is right there. Look how many. Figures. Think about that. Imagine if you had that. If that was your loss because somebody isn't wanting to go the right path, how pissed off would you be? I would be right. through the roof. I would Ten be through the roof. Yeah. Yeah. 10 digits. So think about that. Uh, you know, for people who run mutual funds, that's 10 digits. You you lost me. Yep. And what is that? Like one, that's 1 billion, right? Yeah. That's yeah. 1 billion. billion. You know, I, I've 1. heard 1. the number. billion, he lost yeah. them. So uh-huh. think about that. Bob uh-huh. is playing with someone else's money that he should not be doing. Not only See, that. What, not what people part of a say. lot of people's money, right? Yeah. 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 That's, not why, only- that's why I sold. Well, yeah, it's, 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 he's, he's playing with a lot of people's money, but he won't take mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the magic key. The magic key. Stupid. Yeah. I'll bring it up every time. 
<laughs> no, no, and, and see, this is what I mean. This is where it's all like, like if you want to go to it, this is where I always say, like, all these little aspects that we're not happy, whether it be Parker IP or whatever, you can go back to the root cause of all of it is right there. Yeah. So all this kind of like whining and complaining, I'm like, okay, fine, do it. But we need to understand the core problem. And the core problem, I keep on saying it, and I will never stop saying it until he's gone, is Bob Iger. And I will not shy away from that. Some people are like, well, no, no, no. Bob Iger, problem. Your day is done. Time to go off. Yeah. Bob Chapek, a lot of people argue with me, well, Bob Chapek is blah, blah, blah. I'm like, I get that. He wasn't the greatest of guys. I had plenty of problems with the man. But highest stock price ever for Disney was under who? Bob Chapek, coming out of pandemic. So understanding all these things is oh, important. He also for had the whole Fox thing to deal with that yeah. Iger just so many. On. Exactly right. So this is where I this is where I keep on coming back to it. Like understanding where the problems are is highly important, and also understanding that there's active people right now trying to correct the problem. This is where I have that white pill moment. This is where I have that positivity and hope. Is because it's like no, I see these guys going to war to correct it. And you know, and and one of the things that I do in our podcast, we do in our podcast, we always try to honor Walt. You know, Walt Disney because. We're here, we're all together because of that man, right? Yeah. yeah. And the legacy that he's created. And I sit here and I go, man, somebody needs to stand up for him. He's been dead and gone for a long time, but we need that. If we're fans and we, we love what's going on and we love and connect to that, somebody needs to start standing up for this guy because Bob Iger isn't doing it. Half The entirety of that board isn't doing it. So who's going to do it? It's going to take people like us having these conversations with him and spreading that knowledge to what's going on is what's important and understanding we have a deeper connection with everything and we don't have to worry about all this other crap we just understand that we connect at this level so this is what i keep on saying it's like all the problems lie there he's so gone one of the things that we are hearing in my news local news here is that some people at disney now wants to get rid of you know how the arch says welcome to uh, walt disney world Mm -hmm. They want to get rid yeah. of the word Walt, or the name Walt. Yeah, no. Wow. No. no. You no. believe that? Wow. No, and, and I do. Because you can look at, again, this is where I go back to it. The the yeah. active, the active um, it, it feels like an active um, system or an active, you know, um, attempt to remove him for whatever reason from the equation. And you cannot do that. Because no. when you break down what Walt was trying to create and what he created at a huge level is something that transcends not only time, but it transcends any differences. And this is the, again, this is why we come back to where we are, is all this stuff transcends, transcends <clears throat> anything that we're different about. We connect, and I always say it on my, on, on my show, is we are here because we connect at a deep level and it, all the other things. Yeah, over tra it, you said the matter. word transcends a transcendent yeah. level, right? So like yes. some of these, these let's tie it back to what we were talking about earlier. These narratives, yeah. look, these aren't just narratives, stories, you know, I know the deconstruction things like, okay, well, you know, you love this back, you love the old Star Wars, but let's take Luke, let's deconstruct him, let's make him this, and and it's a subversive narrative. Um, it's a very, it's a postmodern thing, it's a post-postmodern thing. That's just how that storytelling is. I don't like it because yeah. I do think that these stories, I think there's thousands of years of stories, storytelling, no matter mm -hmm. across cultural no matter what culture you're in, like these, these stories connect and, yeah. and transcendent stories will always capture the imagination and capture the heart. And when you, you, you think like, oh, these are stupid and these are dumb. And then you just want to break them down and, and tell stories that are either what we have. I, I, I think we, we live in a very nihilistic culture right now. Nihilism is just big. It's like, Look at the, you know, the, you know, Star Wars is about deconstructing, breaking down Luke. Yeah, you know, he was a, he was someone you could believe in, but now he just drinks blue milk and throws away lightsabers. 
<laughs> and, and we're supposed to like scoff and laugh at that and feel good about ourselves. But I think that's horrible. Yeah. I think that's yeah. horrible. I think these stories that that transcends time and space and cultures and history are worth retelling and retelling and retelling. Why? Because they recapture our hearts. They just do. And, and I think we need to new, we need to get more insightful, more creative and retelling, not, not <laughs> deconstructing those stories, but retelling those stories in <laughs> such a way that captures our hearts now, now, and look at all, there's so many kit. like, I'm going to go off on tangent. Look, I work with youth a lot, and I've never seen a group of more nihilistic, just, I don't, no, nothing matters, mm -hmm. you know, there, there is no hope in life. Kids, that's not how I grew up. I grew up with these stories. I grew up with these stories of Star Wars and, and, uh, and Disney movies and princesses and heroes and, and all those things. I would wake up in the morning with these stories in my head and it helped shape my life, you know, it helped me be a better person. I, and I just think like, we need to, we need, we don't need to break down these stories. We need to retell them in more whimsical, like, you know, recapitulated ways that where we capture the hearts of the new generation, but we don't need to like, but instead like this, where we're at, I think in storytelling is, it's so shallow in the sense that like, you know, let's uh, right now what's super cool and trendy is uh, just deconstructing these movies and they're dumb and they're stupid and let's poke fun at them and ha ha ha, everyone's gonna love it. And I think it's gotten to a point, a breaking point where it's like, no, we don't. We don't love it anymore, you know? And if, if you want to recapture hearts and imaginations, it's not about going to some new, because nobody knows, it's deconstruction without reconstruction, Yeah. right? So we we can deconstruct this stuff, then, then it's like, okay, where do I go from here? Well, no, this, this whole movie is just about nothing. <laughs> it's like, it's what, it's it's kind of is. No, and, and that's, 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 that's where we want. And, and that is the, 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 the end point for that, right? Mm -hmm. It's the only end point. It's yeah. literally nothing. It's literally one of nothing. So, you know, I, I don't think I've ever come out of a theater more feeling more hollow and defeated oh. after Last Jedi. Oh, yeah. No. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. I walked out Me and, and I kind of went like... entire night drinking ourselves. <laughs> into oblivion <laughs> it was sad it was yeah yeah so it was, Steve, let me ask you a question since you have not really talked <laughs> i know you're a uh, star wars yeah. fan you was yeah. what do you think of the old star wars compared to the new ones well i grew up with the i grew up with all the old ones the uh, episode four five and six okay um from all the new ones i did not like I was so hoping number one would be really good. Yeah. And they stuck a bunch of stupid characters in there. Jar Jar Binks, number one. <laughs> <laughs> That's hey. the, the, the whole thing. <laughs> we have two. So. <laughs> so episode two, uh, I don't know. It was kind of lame with Attack of the Clones. I mean yeah. I hate those robots. They're really stupid. Oh, come uh, on. <laughs> it was all like kids stuff. It wasn't like, yeah. you know, the originals were. And and then Revenge of the Sith was, it was okay. That that from the, from those three prequels, that, that one I liked. But okay. Rogue One was my favorite. When I, when we got out of Rogue, Rogue One out of the theater that's when you know, I would just want to say to everybody that's waiting in line, everybody died. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know? but, it, but it's okay. It's a good thing. It's not. Yeah. A bad thing. Yeah. It, that's why. It's, yeah. So yeah. I, I got to ask though, is it because the ending you like that brought you in there and like that really like pulled you like that, that was your closest connection to. Oh, because it just brought you like, 
bam, like right yeah. back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. No, and, yeah. and that, and I think anybody. This is where I, I my 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 going theory is like anything that's going to be good in Star Wars right now has to have a deep, not only a, not not a thin thread, but a deep hard tie to yeah. the OT. If it doesn't, yeah, because have it, it's gonna fit. I'm old, so <laughs> I'm connected to the old, the originals, you know. Right. So the, all this new stuff, like I, you know, like I I wish I still haven't watched Clone Wars, and I I know that's a really good show. I haven't watched it, oh, right? Man, <laughs> so, man. You know, so then, so when I watched Ahsoka, it was really boring for me. Because what about Rebels? Are you up on Rebels? I, I see, and I forgot. I haven't watched that either. I think I saw like one episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Oh. It's her, yeah, <laughs> I'm bad. <laughs> no, I know. I, I, I think oh. Steve, you you are right that. At the end, it gave me a ha ha moment. All of a yeah. sudden, you're like, "Wait yeah. a minute, that I saw this part." Yeah. Like you know, when they're giving the the things away, and then boom, you know that yep. ship yep. goes out, and then you yeah. see Star come. Out. I'm like, "Oh my god, that's it!" And, and that's I love how they, light bulb they moment for me. They took the old ship, the interior, yeah. and you know they blended everything in, and I, that's yeah. what made made it so good. You know, because they're taking kind of like the end of um, um, Revenge of the Sith at the end. Yeah. You know, they, they brought in the old ship and the yeah. one that we were used to, right? And the way everything looked and stuff. So that part touched, you know, you yeah. you you start to remember when you were a kid and, oh, I remember, you know, and all this stuff happening. Yeah. So I'm so sure. What you, Jason? What is your aha moment? Like Steve. Brought up yeah. a great point. That was an aha moment for me, too. Right. Yeah. Good question. Um, well, I mean, that's kind of the same. Like I, I keep saying, R Rogue One is one of my my favorite movies, like ever. Yeah. So, um, I, I see. I'm a big droid person, so like I love all the stupid droids. <laughs> 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 K two S O was great. Yes. I love K two S O. Oh God, yeah. Everybody keeps yeah. bringing up stuff I was about to say, but um, yeah, like that's one of the, like the best characters. <laughs> Plus, I like Alan Tudyk. So, I just, Alan Tudyk yeah. is the man. Yeah, <laughs> but like we you, we were always talking about like connecting with characters and shit, and I, I don't connect with the droids, but like I, I I can get like giddy, I guess, kind of over them, you know, like yeah, mm -hmm. just seeing like. All these battle droids and shit like that, that kind of makes sh stuff fun for me. Not saying that those movies are great or anything, but um, having decent characters and so that's yeah. I get more tied in with just characters rather than yeah. a story in a whole, I guess. Um, but that being said, you know, it's just, <laughs> still Rogue <real> One, <laughs> just yeah. it, it's the ultimate thing, like, like Steve said, it. it it ties everything together. Like it makes the room, you know, as, uh, as the dude says, the carpet makes the room. So it sounds like what we really need to bring Disney is good character development, good tie in, right? Because Steve made up a great point. That tie in was like thing right there. Like, Oh, that's where it starts. Right. Yeah. Yep. So what's the third. So the, what's the, Third one that I we did not talk about that we did not identify as his own little thing that we need to tell. What do you what do you think? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> I don't know. I think you're you're on a roll. I, I also want to say though, um, as like Udi keeps mentioning, uh, Cara Dune. Mm -hmm. We all want her to have her own show. It was going to happen, then that got canceled. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, like you keep saying, like. You need to listen to your audience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like the main yeah. thing here. Yeah. Listen to your audience. Don't let your directors change the story and don't make a movie just because you can. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that, that's you know what's book. really crazy? The book. crazy part is Disney's current movie, the one that, that bombed, that only made like 300 Wish. million, whatever yeah, which it is. One? Which one? Wish. Yeah. Which one? Uh, wish yeah, which one? It's been, okay, it's been a year. Right? There's three. There's three. So, that's so 
apparently wish they spent 180 million on it. You know, Godzilla is kicking his butt, and they spent 50 million yeah. on Godzilla. It was like 60 million or something, wasn't it? Yeah, who's something. gonna go watch it tomorrow? Uh, you know what? Let me tell you, I saw Godzilla. Godzilla, that movie, brought me back to exactly what yes. Star Wars one and two and three did for me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And how much do you know how much they spent on it? Because I it wasn't 50 million. Much. 50 million. How many? 15 yeah. million. Wow. One five. That can yeah. you can you talk more about that? that? That's a million. <laughs> I mean, that's a, a not million. It's amazing. I know. Kenny and I were talking about that. And I'm like, I oh gotta go see that movie now. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know it was that cheap. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, well no. Go ahead, I, go ahead. Think this through, right? 15 million versus yeah. wish 180 million. <laughs> oh my wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Well and no, maybe, <laughs> maybe Bug Iger is just like taking like half the process <laughs> for, like <laughs> well, no, proceeds it, 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 not proceeds, it, it, but, but it shows you you can make something good. <clears throat> Well, no, yeah, you don't need to spend money to make a movie. Like, or that's great. what I was gonna say. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It, it, uh, Godzilla minus one right now is 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 a huge, and any of the movies that are gonna be that have been profitable as of late, I have been been one of those things. Like it's telling you, everybody is telling you, just make it a good story, and we will come. We will give you the money right here. We'll we'll start doing this right here, like because this is what it is. Yeah, and Disney. For 90 years was that we're just like yeah. this is why we're we're here and so you know yeah. this is where everything lies right there it's just, and just then, tell a good story yeah and this ties into what we've been talking so i, I have watched a, a couple like um you know reviews of godzilla and it was like you know one of the reasons why what makes this movie so good i actually cared about the characters mm-hmm. yeah yep yeah. Just not the oh, buildings. If if you guys go see God Godzilla, don't leave until it's done. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That the most Marvel important movies. part is actually at the end. It answers yeah. so much question questions I've had. Literally, that ten seconds will be like, oh my god, that's what I've been asking myself. <laughs> I love that. So Who's in the leave. Godzilla outfit? Yeah. <laughs> I'm telling yeah, you, man. Come down, like, oh, it's, it's awesome. you. But don't leave. <laughs> it's a Scooby Dooby. It's a Scooby Doo moment. It's you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> here's, the, the, here's the thing. I think that Disney really, um, ne- the new Disney, didn't do. They don't come to guys like us who care about the company and say, "What are you yeah. looking for?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, this Walt actually cared. So every yeah. time he pushed out yeah, a movie. Did. He would yeah. actually go out and say, what made it go so good? They yeah. asked. He asked questions. He was there. <laughs> you know, when Bambi came out, he actually um, took out a loan against his own home and a company. Three times. It was, yeah. yeah. And Bambi was a make or break. He yeah. literally sat in the um, sat in the theater and like, what's going on? You know? And he, after it's done, everybody clapped and asked him. So yeah. he knows what will work. Mm-hmm. Over here, I don't see nothing. Look, like You're, Jason was saying, there's like so many stories out there. Jason and Jeff both. There's so many stories out there that Disney can do. Yeah, they just choose not to do it because yeah. it's not oh, a narrow Steve-o. thing, right? Yeah, well, Steve, well, Steve-o, Steve-o, good point. And and here's what it just popped in my head <clears throat> uh, when you said that. It was like it's like this. So Disney was used to be once upon a time. In a magical world, Disney was in this space where it was on the cutting edge of art culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and it wasn't on the cutting edge of culture the way that, you know, they were like, well, here's how I want to shape culture, what they're doing right. now. Right. But it was, how does the culture feel? What are they going through? And then how can we, you know, not not necessarily in this like manipulative corporate space, like manipulate and get the culture to do what we want. But how can we actually speak to their hearts? Yeah. You know? And I, th- I think we all live in a culture now where there's all these things that we don't talk about or like it's not we turn on the news or these, these aren't explained. I'm like, I'm poor as heck. 
I go to the grocery store, it is way more expensive than it ever was in my lifetime. What the heck is going on? But when I turn on the news, it's like nobody talks about this stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But Disney, once upon a time, would have been like, I got gotcha. you. I have. I, I, I hear your heart. Mm-hmm. And they would, have, they would have, you know, so a lot of those stories, like whether it was Snow White, whether it was, you know, Peter Pan, yeah. whatever it was. Yeah. A lot of these things came out in times where, you know, there was a cultural, what do you call it, zeitgeist yeah. or a cultural like, like, depression and or the or war or whatever. like a big, whatever, what, whatever you call it, like a common thing that we all felt, you know, in that time and space, in that time, space and history. Well, now they don't do that anymore. And it sucks. Right. Because I would love to go to a movie. <laughs> all the ones that cared about it, they're all dead. Yeah, because, because, because they don't. Fired. Now it's just about yeah. like it's just I'm, about I'm gonna I'm gonna share something with you guys yeah. oh, to yes, blow sir. your mind. Okay? Absolutely. Here's a buck. Okay. <laughs> so sir. this buck represents all the money in the United States. Bob Iger actually says they're going after the top whatever percent. Yeah. They say, he says that their average customer now that they're going after has a family income of 78, 79,000. What does yeah. that mean? That actually means only a third qualify. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They only get this much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this much, here's the problem, right? This much, that third, not everybody's going to like you. Not everybody's a Disney person. Right, Mm -hmm. you fold it in half. That thirty percent becomes fifteen percent. Yeah, that fifteen percent. The problem is a lot of this fifteen percent don't believe in us. Don't believe in that family, God, utopia thing. Yeah, they don't. They don't believe in that. That fifteen percent, pick it, fold it in half. Seven and a half percent is with them only. Yeah, wow. they're going after this. This is the reason why they're losing money. Hundred wow. percent. Well this said. Is based yeah. on Bob Iger's own words. Yep. Yeah. And if you look at the numbers that I just told you through uh, U.S. Census, this yeah. is what they're chasing after. Yep. Seven yeah. and a half percent of the money in the United States. I mean, that's. I love the. Totally makes sense. Is why the only well, it's not even available right now, but why the top tier Magic Key was available. Yep. See. No, now, you know. Uh, there you go, Jason. No, you just you just fill the, in, the magic key. In the hole. <laughs> it all winds up and goes right to the magic key. <laughs> well, because I'm really <laughs> look. Okay, magic key. I had like two weeks to renew my key. At the point in time when they were doing it, they're like, "Oh, you only have a month," and it was like two yeah. weeks later. This is and an I ongoing renew, and I haven't been able to buy one since because <laughs> they started limiting them, and it was only there for like a day. Yeah, they, they sold like maybe a hundred of them. Yep, it's it's, yeah. it's just stupid all no, the way around. No, but but no, but Alfred, honestly, that that is like a brilliant way of describing what has been yeah. going. On. It was it, brilliant. Oh yeah, it, it, absolutely brilliant. Because yeah, the yeah, there's the, the one the one thing that I've been hearing a lot of is like you know the modern audience, right? And I'm, I'm sure all of you have heard that. And I always scratch my head and like, what is that one? What does that even mean? And then two. <laughs> Where are they at? Because they're either not existent or they're not showing up. But dude, they're not there. So yeah. bringing it down to that sliver, it's like literally this. This is where the idiocy and the ideology comes into play. Because how can you continue to chase that sliver when they had probably one of the biggest slices of any corporation yeah. and storytelling entity in history yep. to begin to to whittle it down? And this goes back to Magic Keys. This goes back to park prices. This goes back to all of that is pointed right there. Yeah. And, you know, I, 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 just just I, let me say this real quick. And, and the one thing that go, I, go, ahead. go ahead, my friend, go ahead. Re, re, really super interesting, right? Is yeah. the common, the common, common accusation that when you hear about people who, oh, you don't like this IP or you don't like what we did there and they, they throw on all the isms or whatever, mm-hmm. right? And the one thing is that they ignore all of us. And what is our conversation? The entirety of the conversation has been, and I will tell you, the, the entirety of the conversation that I've had with everybody I've talked to about this 
it is always the same thing. It's always about transcending everything and connecting. And so this is where I just want to throw this back. All this is is then being captured in the idea, uh, you know, uh, have fallen in ideology and chasing this little sliver while throwing barbs at everybody else when we're all we're saying is like literally you throw all these accusations at us, which are all false, because if you listen to what we're saying, what you're saying, we're saying we're not. And we don't even think it or we don't believe it. Yeah. And this is where we're at. This is where we fall back to is that we know what made Disney amazing. We know what connected us to Disney and they don't anymore yeah, because they're that. facing that sliver. Yep. Yeah. Well, so, I, mean, I mean, that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so I hope I didn't uh, then screw you guys up with that. But yeah, no, that was great. No, 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 it's true. It's, it's no, like everybody's like, a... oh my god, I never thought of it that way. You know? No, no. no, 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 no I explained that to my friends. They're all like, oh my god, I never really thought of it that way. I'm like, no, yeah. I'm sorry, well, if you don't mind, I'm asking permission. My next show, I'm bring, I'm, I'm using that as an example because that was brilliant. If you don't mind, asking yeah, permission. Yeah, yeah, now. Please. <laughs> no, that's good. But you know, to have him on your show, Rudy. <laughs> oh, hey. Okay, well, we'll talk later. Yeah. Actually, was- so when I explained it to my friends in person, I actually bring coins, and what I do is all the dimes, you know, and I'll say, look, here's seventy percent of the average American gone. You got three dimes left. Yeah. And I said, yeah. here's the problem. They want. You know, half of these guys, right, don't like you, don't like Disney. So I yeah. took a dime and put it into two nickels, 15 cents left. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, here's a, another problem. That that 15%, and I could tell you, and, and there, I was like, listen, that 15% will not go to Disney all the time. And they're like, how do you know? I said, because I am one of those people. Mm-hmm. And I said, all my friends are worth all millions and up. And I said, only a third of these guys are like me, like Disney. And I I asked them, where do they go? They said, why the hell do I want to go to Epcot to go see, you know, Italy when I could go there myself and buy it? (laughs) Right. right? And they're like, oh, we're going to Safari and uh, Animal Kingdom. I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to Africa. Mm-hmm. And I can tell you that I, I've seen friends that come back from there. They were actually staying, they're staying in uh, huts, and they actually mm-hmm. have Maasai warriors out there protecting them at night. Protecting. Wow. And they, yeah. they literally showed me pictures of these Maasai warriors. They have lion marks all over them, fighting them off. <laughs> and that, <laughs> that's those a, that's... people that won't give you that money. So 7.5% yeah. of yeah. the United States that will give you that money or even the world, right? Yeah. So I took that, you know, or I took that um, nickel and I put it into pennies. And I'm like, listen, you're seven cents. They're fighting for the seven cents. Think about this, right? Yeah. As a CEO, wouldn't you want that whole pot? Yeah. I always yeah. thought it was weird how um, Iger would always talk about not alienating, like, the... What? What would you say the the family coming from Ohio oh, yeah. or something? Yeah, that, yeah. That, you know, yeah. they couldn't get into the park, but well, we still have reservations, and we still like. Yeah, he, he's not catering to them. No, <laughs> yeah. like he's we always thought that was kind of weird. Like, and, and then but it all makes sense. If now. you listen to what he said, the full sentence, he actually says, "Yeah, we want them here, but they just need to save one more year." He actually said that. Oh, that's not cool. No, and, and this is this is where I have to revert. This is flying in the face of why why Walt created Disneyland in the first place. It was about family. It was about family. Yeah, yeah, Walt was that way for sure. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, you you guys know that you know the origin, like Griffith Park, and and I have a little bit connected because I've been to Griffith Park. I grew up going to Griffith Park, so when you have those yeah. things, I, like I connect well, yeah, with them. Like, Yes, yes. So, you know, and, and, and when I hear those things, it like it, it, it hits me like really a raw nerve because I'm like, th- this is exactly the opposite 
of what Walt created. Exactly. I mean, I there's no, yeah. there's no argument. It's a 180 from it. I know. Yeah. That's true. And, yeah, and, and it, it bugs me and it hurts at a high level. Like we, we will never, you know, like we really all feel it. We all feel it. We do. It, yeah. I mean, I like on my other podcast, like I interview, I've interviewed a lot of Disney people. Like mm -hmm. I've interviewed high Disney voice actors, um, people that I could, I won't drop names, but like we, we've done, Bill. we've <laughs> done, you just sharing the magic podcast. <laughs> just like their hat, we have, and I, there are times we have to edit really, really hard because things come out right. of the people that we interview and are like, well, that's not kind because I don't want them to get blacklisted by Disney. Right. And so in that moment, I, I do that, you know, I used to edit some of these podcasts and I, and, and I would, I would edit hard out of intentionality because I just, I want them to have their jobs and their lives. Right. But then, you know, there'd be a place where they would get very, very passionate and I get it. I understand it. And I, I, I'm the same, you know, I, I'm with, I'm with them in that same space. And, and it was a number one, it was always a love for Walt. That was always it. Like, look, we're, if you're a Disney fan, if you're in this Disney thing, it's probably because you just, you love the, there's something about Walt. Walt could be a son of a bitch. Like Jeffrey Barnes said that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, yeah, he could, he could. And he was, but, he also had this, even though he could do that, he still had this spirit about him that we all could sit there and be like, yeah, okay. I'm, and, and this, and this, um, you know, this, this, this love for anybody, this, this idea of like, anybody could be like me. Yeah. I'm, I was successful, but this, this passion to, and now it, it doesn't seem like, Disney was a lot about the, the the small person rising up to the big person, like the prince and the you know somebody. Look at his somebody life. Who was a, yeah, somebody look at his who, life. Yeah, maybe y'all could explain that better than me. I just, but I feel like we've lost now. Like the heart of Disney, what what we've talked about is like now it's for the upper elitist class. Yeah, that sucks. Yep. Yeah. So. 30, I started coming to Magic Kingdom over 30 years ago myself. And I talk to people. I'm very friendly. I'm sure you could, you guys could tell I'm talking a lot, right? 30 years ago, I asked people, how long does it take you to come here? One year saving, they're there every year. Coming to 20 years after. They're talking about one and a half to two. Going to 10 years, you're looking at about two years or three years for them to save. This year, I've asked people, how long does it take you? Three to four years to get to a Disney vacation now. Mm -hmm. Think about that. 30 years ago, I don't have to save. Boom, we're done. Let's go. To now so our, uh, yeah. our friend in common, uh, Christy, um, <clears throat> she went to Hawaii, stayed for a week. Yeah. yeah. And it was cheaper than yep. it was her, her and her two kids. And it was cheaper than going to Disney yeah. for three days. I, I remember having that conversation with her before she was going to go. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know why you're not going to Hawaii. Like, and, and we had that long conversation about that. It was crazy. But no, and, and I'll give you a perfect example. Our last, our, our last podcast, my last, my last podcast, Mark, his birthday's in January. And he told me a story about him talking with his girlfriend, like, Hey, you know, she's like, hey, it's her birthday, and she knows, love the park, are we going to the park? And they kind of literally started pricing, this is Disneyland, and he kind of went like, holy crap. Like, he did the math, and he's like, no, we're not going to go. And for Mark, I know you guys don't know Mark, and, and, and Jay, you do, you do, and you understand, like, talking to him, Disneyland is like, oh, my God. Like, it is almost everything for this man. Yeah. And like like a lot of us, and 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 so when we, and we had that kind of moment of like, this shit is crazy, man. This is crazy. Where we, who have been year after year, being like, here's my money, let's go. Like, don't even think about it. And now we're the ones stopping and going. 
don't know if I can do that. That's the same as me. Like I haven't been there in two and a half years now. Wow. And I yeah. used to go I, several I, times a year. I, I was there last year. I'm still paying off my honeymoon, but this but, is because I, 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 so I saw so half my heart. There's one thing so. that, that I thought was very interesting though. Last, so I've been here in Florida. I moved to Florida for three years already. So these three years, I have heard nothing but people staying at uh, Airbnbs. They say it's so much cheaper than Disney. Mm -hmm. See, this, this is why Prior I to this, I have not heard that. <laughs> Seriously, it's crazy. Yeah, Jason's been wanting to get a, a, a little place out there and rent it yeah, out for an Airbnb. Dude, let's go, Jason. Come on, man. Hook me up. In North, in Fayetteville, <laughs> North Carolina. We had to buy it first. It's the damnedest thing. Well, like Jason's on. like, I just got to get out to Fayetteville, North Carolina. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> no, you've been lying to me. North Carolina. No. Oh, okay. Never mind. All right. Continue. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's a, yeah. it's very interesting that uh, I'm hearing everybody saying they're staying at Air Airbnb or. They're actually staying at um, Universal. It's cheaper. They have yeah. uh, some sort of uh, new hotel that's ninety nine dollars a night. That's yeah. unheard of for Disney. Well, you know, and you know, th this is where I, I'm I'm finding it really interesting it is the properties and and the park admission prices again are all tells about where we are in Disney Corp, right? So the failure of movie after movie, IP after IP, and, and now the IP has failed across three, what is it, three branches? So Marvel, Lucasfilm, no, and Disney Animation, because it's, uh, which is Disney Pixar, Animation? Man. I don't think so, Pixar isn't doing any, any, any better either. Yeah, so it, what, Elemental, right. Elemental, right. or is it not Elemental, but Elemental legged out, they did okay, but what's the other one? Um, Why well, can't I think about it? The one with the emotions and all that. Why well, can't I think yeah, about yeah, it? Yeah, um, Oh, yeah. Emotions yeah. too. Yeah, that one's coming out. Electric Boogaloo. That was the one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but this is where this is where I find it interesting because of those failures, and then now they're obviously compensating, right? Park price goes up, hotel prices go up. Yep. They, they they cannot continue because the mass hotels aren't built for that. You know, three ten percent of the the people out there. They're it's just not so. The way I feel about it too is that they're going to get they're they're being forced and they're being pushed, and this is where the continuing, you know, conversation like we're having is this is all helping accelerate the need for them whether they want to or not isn't even a quite is quickly be becoming a non-issue. It's like no, no, we need to do to survive, and 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 listen to Bob Iger on a lot of it. You know, I right. listen to do the share do those earning calls. And I'm constantly amazed as I listen to the last four in a row going, scratching my head like, dude, what are you doing? Yeah. And I think this is where we're going. And yeah. So the yeah. And, 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 and if, do you mind if I no, go, go for on it. that? Okay. Because yeah. I think everything thinks it's a left and right issue, but it's a top down issue. You know, and I, that's what I would say. It's, it's not a left and right issue. It's not like everything is spun nowadays in, in this Dich everything's dichotomistic so mm -hmm. dichotomies are like left or right you're either on this or that. like that's not the the, the we're over here man we're over here that, yeah. that's the that's the dichotomy nobody really like this left right paradigm is silly and it's like they want you know they the people on the top want you to think you either have to be left or right, but that's sort of the silliest thing I've ever heard right now. Most I think, Americans I think what, are in the middle. Yeah, yeah, or or on the middle bottom, of America, you know, or on the bottom there. bottom, or yeah. whatever it is, and and mm -hmm. it, it has a lot more to do with the top and bottom than. And I think Disney right now is, I think that's really if if you were to 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 really just pin it down to be like, what's the problem? I'm like. You know, I don't think they hear that, you know, Disney, the corporate, these corporations, they, they, they operate in a very small bubble uh, up on the top. Mm -hmm. like, it's like the top top. And this mm -hmm. is this vacuum sealed bubble where everyone's opinions, they all fart in this bubble. And they all yep. each other's <laughs> fart 
and they love it. It smells good. They're like, mm, this is nice. And and they and they make movies based off of each other's farts. Yeah. yeah. Right. But then there's people outside the bubble fart bubble. This is a horrible way I'm explaining. Dude, God, I'm. <laughs> Jeff, Jeff, your, this your out. shit don't hey, stink. Hey, dude, yeah. you're you're ready into it. Go, just finish it. You're, no, you're this is bad. It. But anyway, <laughs> I should not be saying this stuff. I'm gonna get blacklisted. I'll never be <laughs> voice now. Um, but I just feel like people have. I, I feel like there's a lot in our that have lost, lost or out of touch with people outside that fart bubble on, yep. uh, on top. And yeah. then it's like anybody else below. It's just like, wait, what? No, you don't. That's not actually. No, no, no. Well, it's like you we're know. saying. Just not only do they not like listen to us, but they don't want to listen to us. Yeah, yeah. that's why. That's they why I called it a fart bubble. They want to do what they want to do, and yeah, because they like their fart bubble. Right. Yeah, and, and, and this, no, and and this is where I always go back to the hope part of it is like, we 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 have to continue to push because. Whether they like it or not, it's people like us <clears throat> that that at the end of the day, yeah, that's true. Have to support them. If we're yeah. gone, they're gone. Period. Right. Period. There's no there. There's no black and there's no gray area about that. It is a black and white thing. And maybe it, when it, you lose a lot of money up top, you're like, okay, maybe I'll turn on this random podcast. Maybe it's us. Who knows? And then they're like, dang, I never thought of it that way. A fart bubble. <laughs> well, you know, and, and again, this like, is that's this, true. I love smelling well, my farts. No, but but this, this is where we go back to the main problem. Is <laughs> is and this is where I keep on pointing it back to where we're at. The problems we have with Bob Iger, and yeah. again, knowing knowing the board and knowing what kind of board he put around him, and knowing all these things, <laughs> you understand where the problem is. And we have to. I the way I feel is like we have to continue to point to where it is. I agree. Yeah, we we, 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 we can't we, stop. We talked about By this. The way, Jason, let, let me tell, let me show you one other thing. There's a problem. Yeah. Go. So DEI represents as much money. Yep. Even less, I would say. Even less, right? But here's the yeah. problem. Majority of the people who are willing to spend, it's right there. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't come to where we are, you're not getting there. No. Hundred percent. I love that illustration, man. I love that illustration. How do you get there? How do you think? How do you think? Uh, so, so you know you what? I this is what I continue to say with, with people, because I've had people ask me, "Well, how do we get there? How? Where? Where do we go from 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 where we are and try to push it into a into a place where we're happy?" Yeah. And I always really say the same two things: is one, if you ever, ever, ever get any form of survey or anything from Disney. <laughs> Fill it out, send it back, and be brutal. And be brutal. Whatever the experience can be, if it's if it's garbage, right tell them. Yes, sir. The other part is we no longer support, blindly support the brand. So have I seen Marvels? No. Have I seen Indy? No. Have I seen Wish? No. And part of that is because I'm the only way that I know for sure that they have no choice is understanding that their money is going away. So the way I know is like, that's garbage. I know what you're trying to do there. I don't support that. I may support Disneyland and I may support all these other things, but those are the things that are draining them. And so let them drain more. Yeah. It's like a pain thing. Like it's a pain response. Like, man, we cannot continue to lose billions of I guess dollars you. on these projects. Yeah. I that's think that's well said. That's well said. Alpha yeah. Traveler, like, what do you what, what do you think? What do you think? Like, how do you move from a space of just being dominated by media corporations to a place where you actually feel empowered and and you might have a, a, a you know, like you feel maybe you can't change the world, but at least you feel good about your own individual. I'm going to give you numbers, and this Let's will see. blow your mind too. I love it. Yeah. So. Just to give you an idea, um, I'm one of the top 10% income earners. Yes. Um, and um, America. Let's when I go, I, the world. I've counted last year, I went to Disney about 40 something times. Nice. Okay. Prior to them screwing around, I stayed the whole day. If it's just me alone, I spent $40 each meal times two. 
Yeah. Plus a bunch of little stuff here. Oh, yeah. I spent yeah, yeah. 100 bucks a day there. Yeah. And I still live here. Right? I don't do yeah. that anymore. So I yeah. vote with my money and with my pocket. Okay. I eat outside. I bring my own food in. Guess what? Yeah. I lost four grand right there for a year from me. Yeah. And I stopped buying merch, except for a few things here and there. Yeah. And I counted prior to this. I spent about two thousand a year on merch and art. See, right. you know I I collect Disney art. I have some yeah. expensive freaking art on my walls. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so just to give you an idea, I I got a I got a few art pieces on my wall that are that I bought for two to three thousand dollars. So they bought that. that. That's seven Boom. grand. Uh, um, you know that they don't have them, right? Yeah. Those That's reprints, big. you know, they they cost yeah. a lot. Place. <laughs> They're called Chiclays. So yeah. I have these Chiclays at home all over, you know, but yeah. that's 7,000 from one, a guy so. like me. And I tell yeah. all my friends about the same thing. They're doing that now. Mm -hmm. Think that through. If I'm able to tell people that to vote with your wallet, that's seven from me. Let's just say there's 10 of us. That's 70,000 they don't have. Yeah. Yep. And yet they're targeting you. <laughs> yeah, and they're yeah. targeting me. They're yeah. like, listen, not everybody on that little sliver dollar wants to see this crazy stuff. Yeah. yeah. I want to see the old Walt Disney movie stuff, you know? Yeah. And yeah. the beauty of and the beauty of Disney was like yeah. like Walt was for the common person. Common person, yeah. Well, was whether, the common person. Whether he it was, was high class or low class or like in between or whatever it was, like you probably had to be, you couldn't be low, low class, but Walt was okay with that. Like he would do everything he could to give the lower class, the higher class. That's why I said it was, it's not a left or right issue, it's a top and bottom issue. But Walt was someone that be, being on that lower bottom and, and then being up on top, he was someone that wanted to give everybody the same yeah. magical experience, whether it wasn't just like, oh, give me your money and then I'll give you a magical experience. That wasn't Walt. Yeah. Walt was somebody who's like, whether you're on the bottom or the top, you're gonna get the same experience. But it's a it's a it's, it's a grand leveler. He was like, but that level, that experience, whether you're on the bottom or the top, it's not based on your <clears throat> whatever you make, you're gonna get that experience. Yeah. And it's going to be magical and wonderful. And that's what made Disney, I think, and Walt so profound. Jeff, you know, you made a great point because what you're saying is the Walt, old Walt experience doesn't discriminate. Yes, yes. Well said. Well no. said. Well said. So, there's exactly. a, uh, a scene in the first uh, Jurassic Park. And this, this hits me every time when we talk about this <laughs> yeah. shit. Dinosaurs will eat you either way. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. the, lo the lawyer is talking to Hammond, and he's like, we're going to make a lot of money. And he's like, no, no, no. It's, everybody should be able to get to the park. He's like, well, we'll have like a coupon day or whatever. Yeah. Disney doesn't think about that anymore. No. It's just yeah. fucking, you can't get yeah. in. Well, That's what made Walt, Walt great was he wasn't that. I mean, he it wasn't about. No, Walt, he. Well, he ate like chili out of a can every like yeah. time. Yeah, he, it's what yeah. kind of person he was, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. well, 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 and, and this, we've been using the word transcend a lot, and this is exactly what we're talking about. Exactly that, mm -hmm. because it wasn't about station, it wasn't about color, it wasn't about sex, it wasn't about anything, it wasn't about any of that. All of this crap that we've been laid on over the last few years just been caked yeah. over us. It, it it breaks through all of that. None of it matters. None of it matters. When you walk into Walt yeah. Disney and you walk into into Disneyland, rather, right? Yeah. Everything got left at the gate. We were all there for the same reason. We're here yeah. to be happy and enjoy each other. I didn't care yeah. if you made a million or you made a hundred thousand or you yeah. made fifty bucks an hour or whatever it is or fifty bucks. Yeah. An hour. All yeah. of that doesn't matter. Well, that's the whole we're here to have today. The, the whole sign said it all. I mean, I mean, yes. like, like all you have to do is like go to Disney and you you hop on the most horrible ride that I used to hate, but now it's became one of my most favorite. No, don't say it. Don't say it. It's it's a small world. I'm oh, sorry. You're gonna say it. 
I know. I know. Really? I used to, my grandparents <laughs> broke down on the ride. He's the they almost, like, the they almost world. drowned themselves. They almost <laughs> they, my grandparents back in the day, I think they broke down. It's a small world after all. <laughs> they, were, they came this close to like jumping out and just drowning themselves on the shallow water <laughs> just, to, just to get out of the experience. But then, but I, and I always had that in my head and I thought that, oh, I hated a small world. But I, about a few years ago, I went to Disney World and then Disneyland, and it, the experience was this, pretty much very equal. Um, and it was, you know, you're like, okay, you're trajected into this, you know, here's here's all the cultures, here's all the world, and like, it's a small world. At, and this monotony, like the songs playing over and over, is it? Annoying, yes, but I, I, I found it more profoundly beautiful the more I, I went on this ride, mm. and it was like it was all these cultures are so different, but then it was like you get to experience every culture differently in all these different shape, and and it was okay, and if you if you shut up and you get on that ride and you. You know, like you're looking around at these wooden puppets that some of them aren't working right. I mean, <laughs> it's fine, but you do it, and you're and you're you sort of like you start to get it. You know, I'm getting older. I'm almost forty, so I'm like I'm I'm getting a little bit more tender at my older age. And I'm 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 really, but that was really my experience. Like I was look, I'm like okay, I could I could see the beauty of this culture and this culture and that. But here's what I thought was so, Walt, when you break through, hate to, spoilers, at the end of that ride, you break through the, the last portion, everybody is dressed in white and gold. Yeah. <clears throat> Every culture, it is haunting, is haunting, because, like, it's, it's more haunting than the haunted mansion, <laughs> you know? Because it's like, wow, this is a picture of the world as it should be. And every culture still has their little block. They have their identity. They have their beauty within that, that box of identity. But then they are all singing together in this most. And we are all, we are all one. Yet mm -hmm. still this distinctiveness but yet we are still all together and singing is this one song that is i think what we all want agreed i think that's what we all want and agreed. i think that's one thing that when we watch these shows these movies i think that's what we all want and it's not and instead it's like we're getting i hate to be negative but we're getting division we're not getting that end point in It's a Small World where we're all dressed in white and gold and we're singing yep. together. Yes, we can celebrate each other's differences. Absolutely. But we are 100% all singing together. You know, now, if yeah. Disney Plus had shows or, or Disney had movies that I think we would, I think there would be. I think there'd be lines just outside that movie theater. Well, I, I think, you know, using the small world as an example, I think what we've had now is they haven't broken through that last barrier. Yeah. We're, we're stuck. We're not through that last bit where we all realize. We're not even halfway through. We're all right. We're, exactly. You see what right. I'm saying? We're, they're way too caught up in all, all the differences we get. Yeah. That's the first part of the small world, but that's yeah. not the last part. Yeah, exactly. I don't think they understand. They're, they're so caught up in, in trying to make everything perfect and, like, diverse that they're segregating themselves. Like, yeah. yeah. It's, it's actually hurting. Yeah. It's hurting right. the being seen, yep. which is the small world. Like, when you, when you finally, like... Those that that those distinctiveness that distinctiveness is beautiful and it's wonderful, but that is only there to get you towards that ending scene. Yep. And right now we focus like right now 
we've made that ending scene the the um, the div- the the differences, which, yeah. which 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 really like you have to have both. Like it's 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 a, it's, it's not either or. It's both and. Here. Like we have to celebrate each other's differences. However, Here's the problem though, because if you have togetherness, there's less taxpayers. <laughs> <laughs> Think that through. Actually, the Rockefellers no, no, actually right. uh, said right. that. No, I the, um, exactly. You're talking about. I know. If yeah. there are less families, you got two rents to pay, two utilities yeah. to pay. Yeah. You know. So. Yeah. Think that through. Is that no, something yeah. that they really think, want? Think that I'm too dumb to think that through. So. Could you yeah, think no. that or for me? I, I don't know. I don't know. Just wait for the small world live action movie. Well, I don't yeah. know, but I'm like, no, but I think that's a great point. And I, but uh, I, I, Jason, I, I uh, and Jeff, you actually asked me what else I do. I actually tell people to go their, their way of uh, Airbnb now. All my friends. Yeah. And they're they're like, oh, I want to stay on site. I'm like, what benefit do you get? Yeah. They don't pick you up from the airport anymore. Right, yeah, and then yeah. you really don't get, you know, to stay or go into the parks earlier. You get yeah, what? Yeah, aren't even 30, 30 minutes. Yeah. That's for that's walking from the gate to a ride. That's thirty minutes right there in Magic Kingdom. Yeah. One. Uh, how do you normally get to Magic Kingdom? But you personally, you just take the car to. Oh my God! So you try <laughs> to the Magic Kingdom. You show them your pass. And then they'll park you. And once you're parked there, we it used to be that, that they didn't have trams, so you have to walk. So yeah. you walk from parking to, you know, I guess a TTA, a transportation TTA. ticket agent or whatever the hell it is. And literally, that's probably a 20-minute walk. And then from there, you take the wow. tram or you take the boat. That's another 15, 20 minutes. It depends on how fast you get it or when you get it. Yeah, and literally from when you park to the to the actual park when you beep in, it's thirty minutes already. Wow, wow, wow! So, Steve, when you come here, you know when you guys come here uh, as a <laughs> as a guys trip, you'll see. I'll go with you. Uh, you're you're <laughs> our new friend. I appreciate it. Book the Airbnb. Yeah, let's go. But just to, <laughs> just to give you an idea, I I did the math with my friend, a few of them, and. Based on Disney's trip, you know the the, the uh, hotel stay and Airbnb, something comparable. Right. There was mm-hmm. actually a seventy six dollar and change difference after tax and everything. Yeah. One yeah. day. One day. Yeah, one day. Yeah. One day. Yeah. Think that you know if you're here for five days, that could add up. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. So that's why that's why I tell people that if you as a as a corporation from Disney, if you don't care about those people who are kind of like near the middle, you know, and even though I'm up there, I don't see myself up there. You know, I see myself yeah. right in the middle with the rest of the guys. That's who yeah. I am. You know, that's class. That's Walt. You're, you're Walt. I grew up. I grew up dirt poor. Mm-hmm. My dad came to the stage with 50 bucks in his pocket. Yeah. You're like, and you know what? That. I got hand me downs for my cousins. Yeah. <laughs> so think, yeah. think about that, right? So for <laughs> me, I'm going to always be that average show. Yeah. So if, and if and you don't and do the right thing for me, why should I do the right thing for you? Think about that. And I mm-hmm. always tell my friends that look, if you're going there, you know you're getting fleeced. Do you want to yeah. get less fleeced? Yeah. Or do you want to get more fleeced? Mm-hmm. You can stay on site and get yourself fleeced all over. Your ass is going to be showing. <laughs> <laughs> or at least you got, you know, you get fleeced a little bit, but you still have a little bit of fur on you. So when winter comes, hey, you're okay. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people don't understand. They're like, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll get the, we'll get our, uh, our souvenirs there. I'm like, listen, before you go, Good. Yeah, that place you showed. The warehouse. Yeah, yeah. That place is cool that you, yeah. you showed on your channel. Yeah. Yeah. And literally, just to give you an idea, the um that Disney mugs, right? Yeah. Literally, it's still being sold at and in the Disney uh 
parts for twenty some dollars. Got it for four ninety nine. Yeah, <laughs> nice. So before you guys, if you guys come down here, just make sure you get your stuff there first. Yes, you'll, sir. You'll, you'll save so much money. That sounds good. You know, and think about this: if you're talking about a, a guy like me, who I'm, I'm, I have a lot of friends who come down here, and I tell them these tricks. How much isn't? How much of that money isn't going to Disney's pocket? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't feel it's right. right. Because if you guys are doing right, I'll be your biggest advocate. You know, yeah. everybody here, all five of us, we love Disney. This is the reason why we're here. I love right? Disney. Yeah. But if you're not, if you don't, we don't feel like we're being treated right. Like Jason, how you said two and a half years since you got that pass, and they gave you like one day, and you missed it or something like that. Yeah, that's horrible, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, how do you feel? You know, as a person who's saying, "Yeah, I want to be there. I want to get the tickets," but yeah, I mean, you're, same thing as the hotel. Like, I was, I was going to say this, but I cannot stay at a Disneyland hotel. It is too expensive. Yeah, I don't. I don't either. I don't. I oh don't yeah, no, I right right used to all the time. Yeah, but I can parents. go right across the street and pay like. Like half uh, the amount, one tenth. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, we. I did for our honeymoon. Like it was awesome. It was like it was such. It was and it was literally just five minute walk to Disney. Yeah, yeah. But it wasn't a Disneyland hotel, and it was. And they they gave like the they on our honeymoon, mine and Hannah's honeymoon. They they put a uh, like Mickey and Minnie dolls right on the bed, and it was mm -hmm. it was like. And it was just this podunk hotel. Is that that candy candy place that's right up right in front of Disneyland? The, the hotel. You know, Candy Cane Lane. Yeah, Candy Cane Lane. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure. I'm just gonna say that's yes. Awesome. To make me feel good. <laughs> uh, no, I think so. Yeah, about your honeymoon, not good. I know my wife. My wife was so sweet and so kind, and she <laughs> she did all the work to plan that stuff because I was working hard on you know my stupid other job. You know, to me. <laughs> but Jeff, what, what you're saying makes sense because it sounds yeah. like, you know, you're looking for that magic. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that, right? Good. Yeah. Jason, yeah. you're looking for that magic saying, hey, listen, <laughs> if I miss that one day, shouldn't you kind of just say, hey, you know what? I got this. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. We're going to take Disney care of you, should be accessible. And that's the beauty right. and the magic of Disney. It needs to be accessible. And, and it see, be all accessible. of us, it's like, we're trying to find a way to get to Disneyland or Walt Disney World, not not Burry Farm, not Universal Studios. Right. Or... <laughs> yeah, so you, you can buy a season pass to Knotts for like two hundred bucks. Yeah. Oh, that's it. But wow. how often would you go? Well, if I lived there, I mean, I used to. I mean, if I lived there, there all the time. Yeah, I mean, so did I, but I never went. I would always went go to Disneyland. Uh, well, I, that I was because it was accessible. <laughs> <laughs> I went there because they had good food and I had friends there. So. Good. And now you can't because it's and it's becoming something, you know. Yeah. And I, th I think, uh, I think Alpha said, you know, was saying this stuff earlier. It's like you know, it's 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 becoming a place where, um, you know, they're trying to brand themselves. They're trying to brand brand themselves to the upper class, but the upper class goes, "No, I could just go to Paris. Mm -hmm. I could just go to. Mm -hmm. I could actually. I don't need fake Paris. I can, <laughs> so so Disney in and of itself, like giving people the experience of Paris and Epcot and all this stuff. Well, that was meant for these. That was meant for the lower class. It was meant for the, or yeah. the even just." middle or lower class whatever it was to give you that experience and 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 now it's like they want to like compete with actual paris like what no no that's silly like no this the disney and going back to walt how walt was walt was never there to, ex to compete with actual landmarks in our you know this is going back to uh, where we started with Udi talking about um, them trying to take, or was it Udi or Kenny? I can't remember. They're trying to take the way uh, Walt from the uh, Disney World name. Yeah, they want to do that. Walt didn't name Disney World after himself. It was Disney World. Well, well, Disney right now is a real problem with Walt. Well, what I mean, what I mean is, it, it was Roy 
who celebrated oh, his yeah. brother and na- renamed yeah. it Walt Disney World. I got gotcha. you. I hear. Okay. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're Not me. I know. I don't. I'm. I'm. Good. <laughs> no. Someone else. Someone else. Listen. listen. But, you know. <clears throat> where are you at? Me, it, it, hey, it, Steve. It's really you simple. You lost the magic. You know. Yeah. And one of my friends were like, "Yeah, we stayed at you know uh, uh, one of the one of the uh, Coronado Springs, right? And they said that, oh, we're not giving you daily uh, room service. You have to request it." It's two hundred fifty nine dollars oh, wow. a night, and they yeah. were there for ten nights. I'm wow. like, wait, you almost like after everything's done, it's like three thousand bucks for this freaking, you know, ten ten nights. They're like, yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. you didn't get room service. They're like, yeah, we have to request. I can just it. see them being like, oh, you want an extra toilet and, paper roll? That's like, you know, hundred bucks yeah. or something. How much per day did they, did they have to pay for parking? Um, it is now thirty dollars per car going in. That's not that bad. It was twenty five. I know. It's Why so would you pay for like parking at their own hotels? You know, like yeah, uh, yeah, I know, I know. I can understand that Disney that's Land almost a room, room, right? Like, hotels, but in the eighties, that would have been like the room, right? Or the nineties, it would have been like the, you, that would have been the entire room, like thirty bucks a night. Here yeah, you but go. if you if you go like away from the parks, you don't pay for parking at your hotel. <laughs> Fine, Jason. All right. (laughs) All right. It's just another nickel and dime. Yeah. I know. All right. I hear you. I hear you. It lost lost the magic for me. You know, a lot of people. Yeah. No, and and 100%. And and, and this this, uh, is the problem with the company across the board in any Mm -hmm. facet of the company. The magic has been turned into what what money I can fleece from you. Yeah. And that's right. And, and 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 this is top down. Like it's top down, plus, obviously, because it, we used to have fast pass and it was free. Yeah, your no, your uh, your AP came with the photo pass. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, literally, I went I went off the other day, and somebody asked me, "Well, how do we get back?" And I go, "Do you, do you, do you want do you want to do a big 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 huge step to regaining faith in in Disneyland? Go back to pre pre uh, pre pandemic Disneyland." Yeah. Everything that they had going on then reinstated every bit, everything. And and that's what I, I keep saying yeah. is there's no reason f- for them to do what they're doing, especially right. with APs and, and reservations. That shit was never a problem before. No. Yeah. They're making stuff into problems to try to make money. Yep. Yep. And the, the whole lightning, <clears throat> lightning lane with the uh, boosting of the Time, that, that. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like they yeah. put in Lightning Lane in in uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Matterhorn, dude. Matterhorn. What the? Well, they're doing the Matterhorn now too. I believe, or Fast Pass. They're doing Fast Pass, but it's the same thing. Well, I, just, I mean, but they just did it. Oh, at, Little Mermaid. Uh, You're talking about Little Mermaid. Yeah, yeah. Little, Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah. The, Why? That ride never had a line. Yeah. Like, that's a crappy ride there. there. <laughs> and now it's like 10, 15, it's 20 an minutes. Mover, right. So I know what you need. <laughs> that is the most efficient ride system because it never stops. Yeah. yeah. And and you're making it a problem. Yeah. But it you know what, strange. Jason? I think you're right that uh right to say the reason why they're not going away is because they want to know what you're doing, how you're doing, using that information against you. And this is the reason why I try not to bring my magic band. So one thing you don't know is that magic band is RFID. I, I know. So every, so every 10 feet or whatever it is in Disneyland and Disney World, there's an RFID reader. They know exactly where you're going, how yeah. you're going, why you're going. I'm not giving I'm not giving them that information unless they pay me. So this is the reason why I don't bring that. Um, I still have old school. Here's my little paper pa- uh, little plastic yeah. pass. You can't track me. Yeah. But yeah, did you yeah. know that? This is the reason why I don't yeah, I, uh, wear I, uh, the. I heard magic about pass. that stuff. It's it's the same thing as like all your likes on Facebook. Yeah. Now yeah. we're just selling that information to yeah. ad supporters. But um, I don't think Disneyland has that capability yet because yeah. they're just you know. Putting that infrastructure in, mm-hmm. 
But, you know, the one thing, like, especially with, you know, using your phone on a lot of things, you mobile order to be, like, more efficient, to get it faster. But in order to get your food, you have to go to the place and say, I'm here. And how I is still, that more, like, how is that I different? Still have than to wait 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, guys, I got to go. You you got to go or you want yeah, to go? Yeah, no, no, I have to. My <laughs> wife's calling me and she's out of town. And I love my wife, so. All right. <laughs> gotta go. I love you guys. All right, Jeff. I, I look, talk amongst yourselves. Good meeting you. Just want to thank a wonderful experience talking to you all, and we'll do it again. But I got to go. Right. So, all, all right. right good all. all right, man. See you. Hey, Jeff. Bye. <clears throat> but, yeah, it's uh, Magic Kingdom has that um, ability to track you. Everywhere, especially yeah. the stores. Did you know that they have, they have those <laughs> I, those readers everywhere? Well, and they're like, "Oh no, it's it's so we can like put your name up on that one or two yeah. rides that actually has that functionality." Exactly. <laughs> yeah. So that's another thing that I don't do is because that helps them make money. Like my job is to <laughs> not to give you what's in my pocket more. Right? <laughs> Yeah. So yeah, and then again, like I said, it's I've saved about seven thousand dollars ever since I started saying, you know what, you want to do shit that I don't agree with. I'm not yeah. gonna give you my money. You know. Yeah, you know, that's another thing is uh, those uh, magic bands used to be free when you yeah. bought tickets or whatever. Now you got to pay for those things too. Oh, I also got rid of my Disney Plus. I, yeah. I realize all these uh, crappy movies that's coming down. I'm like, I'm not watching those. I don't like those. Why the hell do I want, you know, Disney Plus again, right? Mm -hmm. And then they uh, they happen to do something that's that, that tries to stop freedom of speech. They said, we're not going to advertise on X because uh, um, <laughs> Elon Musk allows people to talk freely. I'm like, if that's the case, you're not getting my uh, money again. I'm just going to yeah. continue to not give you money. Money. Yeah, I want. I did. I was gonna. I, I didn't want to go down that avenue because that 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 opens another thing. But yeah, that 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 whole thing with, with specifically what's going on in Florida. Not only with that, with with Elon Musk and what they said there, and what he basically told uh, Bob Iger to do. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. and then, but not only that is also understanding. They're trying to come. They they they're they're portraying this virtuous like oh you know whatever they're virtuous company blah blah blah. But how many of you people? How many people out there know about the you know the the report that's come out of them auditing you know Reedy Creek and everything that's going on? Yeah, right. there's a bunch of things that the, are like the, the other uh, corruption yeah. that has been coming out of there. I've been listening to breakdowns of that report for the week, and I, I shit you not, every time I listen to another breakdown, I my mind is blown by what they've been doing. So this is where I come back to, we, we, we have to do it like what you're doing now. But it's like, no, you're not going to get my money here. This is the only way we turn and we push them to get them to be like, this is no longer viable for you. Either you capitulate to what the market and the fans are telling you, or the company goes down, which God, I hope not. I don't think it will. Or you're out of a job. Yeah. Plain and simple. And this yeah, is the reason simple. why Disney lost a billion dollars on all their movies this year so far. Yep. And they're going to continue. Well, this, is, this is why I'm all for pelts. <laughs> I don't know yep. about that Pearl Mutter dude, but. Pelt. Now you gotta understand Paul Mutter. You gotta understand why Paul Mutter, Paul Mutter is an important entity in this. It's well, I, I know why he is. It's I just think he might have another agenda somewhere. He he. Well, he does. I think he does. But the shares are what's going to give the flex on. Right. I know. And then Paul those are his shares. I got it. Yep. 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 So that's why he's there. Yep. One point six billion guys. <laughs> you know, from the yep. high. Yeah. Think, think yeah. about that. How much that is. You know what that could do. Yep. Forget right. about well, one point six million. Saying. How about sixteen hundred? You know, for us. Yeah. I, I, am, I am totally on board with someone who has a vested interest in wanting Disney to do good. Yeah. 
and, yeah. and yeah. you know, and like we're saying, because he lost that and he wants to get that back. Yeah, and, and, and did and, some, but he wants Disney to do well. Yeah, and so do we, and I am all for that. So, yeah, I, I, I yeah. hear you know, back in the day, he did he did a good job and, and stuff, but he had his chance. It's time to move on. A hundred percent. Amen to that. Yeah. Also, by the way, Knott's Berry Farm season pass is also Cedar Point because you can get into all these parks. Like <laughs> That's right. That's right. They, they get just got bought. For 200 bucks, huh? So that's actually yeah. pretty good. That's yeah, pretty yep. crazy. Um, all right. Well, we've been at this for two hours now. So maybe hey, we like should. Uh, what? 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 <laughs> Damn, we go get dinner. Yeah, we should call it a night. Yeah, because I'm hungry too. <laughs> yeah. All right, gents. Thank you very much for inviting me. It was fantastic. Dude, dude, it's I, been I, a pleasure having time. you on. Yeah, yeah, thanks, Kenny, for coming. We, we'll have to have you on more. Hey, you Steve, if you don't mind, uh, give me every one of their um, their channels. So yeah, I can subscribe. You, you, you just send yeah. it to me. And, yeah, uh, let, let me hook up because I I want to have more conversation with you, Alpha. I, I think Kenny, I think I think we got a lot to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll yeah. be fun. Yeah. yeah All right, guys. Sure. So thank you very much again. You guys are fantastic. I I gotta say I have not had such a great time in a long time on a on a <laughs> chat. So thank you. Awesome. Yeah, really thank appreciate you, you being on. Hey, thank you for uh, getting me in. Yeah. Cool. Nice meeting, Kenny. <laughs> have a good one, guys. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. See ya. All right, guys. <laughs> and now there's three and then two. Yeah. Well, yeah. Way too big. Let's, let's just, uh, let me just call it and then we can all go. All right. So, all right. Um, thank you guys for joining in. Be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, share with your friends and family and let us know how we're doing. And we will see you on the next one. See ya. End of line.